Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today we're going to be continuing our series called In Depth. This video is going to be a Season 11 In Depth Guide on Graves Jungle. Like fish in a barrel. In this series, we'll be going over the difference between an average Graves player and a great one. We'll be covering his abilities, combos, runes, items, jungle clear, his strengths, weaknesses, and some final tips and tricks to take your Graves game to the next level. If you do enjoy this video, it would really help me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading high quality jungle content on the daily, so be sure not to miss out. If you want to join the community to talk with other players looking to improve, join the Discord link in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. First things first, let's dive into Graves' abilities and how you can master his kit. Graves' passive is called New Destiny. This is one of the most unique passives in the game. Graves' shotgun shoots out four bullets at a time in a cone shape that can't pass through units. Any non-champions and objectives are knocked back, allowing you to easily kite jungle monsters. It's usually ideal to get up close to enemies to ensure that all four bullets hit and deal big damage. Keep in mind that towers and minions will block your attacks, so fighting in minion waves and doing tower dives can be very tricky without some good positioning. Graves Q is called End of the Line. You shoot out an explosive shell that detonates after 2 seconds. If it hits terrain, it will detonate almost instantly. It's important to make use of your Q in choke points and out of vision into walls. If this ability is not dodged, it will do massive amounts of damage. The downside is that with no terrain, the detonation is very easy to avoid. Graves W is called Smoke Screen. This is simply a smoke grenade thrown out that will slightly slow enemies and reduce their sight range. Although this ability can seem useless at first since it has such a long cooldown, a well placed W can really change a fight. Enemies inside your smoke screen cannot auto attack anything outside and will not know how to land skill shots and most likely get hit by them as well. This can be used as an engage while you dash in or reactively when enemies overcommit in a fight. Graves E is called Quick Draw. Graves dashes forward, reloading one bullet and gaining an armor stack for several seconds. This armor stacking passive is called True Grit. If Graves dashes towards an enemy champion, he gains two stacks. If you hit an enemy with an auto attack or use E, the resistance boost timer is refreshed. Refreshing your True Grit correctly allows you to reach a maximum of 8 stacks. It is important to keep your true grit going while clearing your jungle and within fights to ensure that you keep the big armor bonus that this passive provides. The dash can also be used as an auto attack reset, which you want to be using at pretty much every point in the game to increase your clear speed and DPS. And finally, Graves ultimate is called collateral damage. You shoot out an explosive shell that deals huge damage to the first champion hit. After hitting a champion or reaching the end of its range, the shell explodes, dealing damage in a large cone-shaped area. Your ulti pushes you back a bit, which can be used to help kite enemies that are diving onto you. Although this is not the most flashy ultimate in the game, the long range and massive damage can be used to burst enemies down or to snipe low health targets that are far away. Runes. Next up, let's talk about the best rune setups for Graves in Season 11. There are two main pages that are being run by all the best Graves players in the world, depending on the situation. Phase Rush and Fleet Footwork. To start off, the current most popular Keystone Ran is Phase Rush. This rune is just extremely strong on its own, as it gives you a massive burst of movement speed to either kite away from enemies or to help chase down carries in the backline. To close out the rest of the Sorcery page, the next runes are pretty much always the same. Nimbus Cloak for even more movement speed, Absolute Focus for extra damage, not only when starting off fights, but also to clear faster in your jungle, and water walking to have even more movement speed throughout the river. Keep in mind that water walking also gives you bonus adaptive damage in the river, which can help with fights over scuttle and objectives. Now let's talk about secondary. By far the most common secondary is the precision tree. Triumph plus Legend Alacrity gives you that extra attack speed that greatly increases your clear speed and DPS in the late game. If you're playing against huge amounts of CC, you can also run Legend Tenacity but this is more situational. Fleet Footwork is the next page that, in my opinion, 
has more flexibility in the way that you can switch it up. I like to think of fleet footwork as more of a frontline setup. The initial movement speed is not as much as phase rush, but can be utilized multiple times in an extended fight. The healing also works very well with graves since you're a tanky champion in general because of your bonus E armor. Next up, Triumph is the most common option, but Overheal is a special tech that I like to run in combination with Fleet and Shield Bow, which I'll talk about later. This can be a good option into heavy burst damage teams, giving you an extra shield. Legend Alacrity and Tenacity are the best options in the third slot. As mentioned before, Alacrity is the best option overall, and Tenacity will help you out against team comps with champions like Rel and Leona who can lock you down. To close out the Triumph page, Coup de Gras and Last Stand are both viable options. When playing into squishy opponents and I'm looking to act as an assassin, Coup de Gras is the go-to. To be honest though, I find myself going Last Stand more often since with Fleet and the Shield Bow plus Bloodthirster setup that we'll talk about in the items section, this build allows you to pretty much act as a drain tank. With this page, there are two main secondaries being run. My personal favorite is Domination with Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter. Sudden Impact gives you lethality when dashing in to help with burst, while Ravenous Hunter is even more sustained to add on top of what you already have. Although less common, I've seen some top challengers running Inspiration Secondary with free boots and either Futures Market or Cosmic Insight. I cannot tell you with confidence if this is the optimal page, but the idea behind it is to save as much gold as you can and put it into full damage in the early game. To close out the runes, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either armor or magic resist is the standard. Armor versus AD junglers and magic resist versus AP junglers. Health is also an option into mixed damage teams since Graves will gain armor from his true grit passive already. Items. Now that you have Graves main rune pages, let's discuss his item choices and in which situations each item makes sense to build. Graves is a champion that can make use of a lot of different items, so it's important to understand why each item can be strong so you can make the right buy in each situation. First off, and most popular among all ranks, Gale Force. This is just a great item in general with many uses. Its active dash gives you that extra mobility tool needed to close the gap versus long range carries or to outplay important skill shots such as Blitzcrank Hook or Elise Cocoon. When going Gale Force, I usually prefer running Phase Rush since this whole setup is based on mobility and bursting out of position squishy targets. The Collector is a very strong second item to pick up if you're not against a tanky team and want to one shot the enemy carries. If you're looking to get a bit tankier, Bloodthirster can also be a good pickup. The lifesteal and shield that it provides can help counter teams with assassins or heavy upfront damage. Before we discuss the remainder of the build, I'll want to talk about the other core mythic item, Shield Bow. Shield Bow is an item that has risen in priority over the last patches, but for different reasons than Gale Force. Shield Bow plus Fleet Footwork and Overheal is actually an insane frontline grave setup that allows you to become a drain tank versus low damage bruiser team comps. Shield Bow is usually the best choice if your team is lacking frontline and you'll need to soak up a lot of damage for your carries. Bloodthirster and Phantom Dancer are great second items with this build to help you tank up damage and still have very high DPS. Now once you have decided your mythic item and secondary, the rest of the item choices are really up to you depending on the situation at hand. Blue Smite or Red Smite is an interesting debate. Blue Smite can be used in games against squishy champions that you're trying to pick off and assassinate, such as Talia and Echo. Red Smite is usually the choice when playing against dueling junglers such as Olaf and Xin Zhao. Both are good in their own ways, so make sure to examine your jungle matchup before deciding. For boots, Merc Treads and Plated Steel Caps are pretty much always the options I choose if I'm trying to play as a semi frontline. Mercs for Tenacity and Steel Caps versus Auto Attack based teams. If I'm running Gale Force plus Collector and looking to output as much damage as possible, Berserker Greaves can be a solid option as well. To close out your build, there are many situational items, so I'll list the most important ones here. Lord Dominix for armor penetration, Mortal Reminder for anti-heal, Infinity Edge if you are fed for extreme damage, Guardian Angel for armor and a second life in a fight, Mercurial Scimitar for a QSS cleanse, Death Dance for sustain and armor, Spirit Visage for extra healing and magic resist, Edge of Night for burst damage and a shield, Maw of Mormortius for anti-burst against mages, and Black Cleaver for some ability haste and movement speed. 
Since that's such a long list, here are a couple example full builds. Jungle clears. Before we hop into the jungle roots that best suit graves, let's quickly go over some general tips to improve your efficiency in the jungle. Use your auto attack pushback to kite camps. It's important to always space yourself in between autos so you don't take damage from your melee camps. You can also increase your kiting by using your E away from your target as an auto attack reset plus pushback. While we're on the topic of graves auto attacks, another tip is to try and angle your autos in a way where you can hit multiple targets at once. Hitting targets straight on will most times slow down your clear speed, especially against camps such as Krugs, Raptors, and Wolves. Make sure to use your E to sneak over the Dragon Wall and Rift Herald Wall to either sneak objectives or to avoid vision. This can also help you take advantage of champions like Karthus or Olaf, who can't punish you for playing extremely aggressive since they can only follow you over with Flash. Lastly would be to keep your True Grid stacks up in between jungle camps. This is fairly easy to do when camps are close together, but saving your E to keep your stacks going is crucial when crossing sides of the map. This will also allow you to stay as healthy as possible, while also making you very tanky for early scuttle crab fights. There's also a recent Ignite Smite tech that some Graves players like to run. Although that playstyle is a bit more volatile, it can still be very strong into certain matchups to reduce their healing and win crucial 1v1s. I usually recommend low elo players to stick with flash since it's safer, but ignite can definitely turn the tides in some harder matchups to come out on top. 5 cam clear into scuttle. This is the most standard graves path that can pretty much work in every game. You can start on either side of the map and clear 5 camps to be on time for scuttle spawn at 315. The standard skill order is E start into Q level 2 and 3. This allows you to clear as fast as possible to get to that scuttle instantly on spawn. Just be careful since you'll not have W until scuttle is secured. This can also turn into a full clear by finishing off your last camp after scuttle if there are no plays to be made. Just make sure to assess this every game as it always changes. Red plus invade. Now this path is more risky but strong with some experience on when to use it. This invade is very powerful against weak level 2 junglers such as Rek'Sai, Zac, and Elise. This really just consists of starting red buff and invading the enemy and bullying them out of their jungle. This path is much stronger if your laners have priority, so do not force this if you have a weak early game champion on your team such as Cassidy. If pulled off correctly, this can instantly put you in the driver's seat by not only stealing their camps, but also by tracking the enemy jungler. Lastly is the three camp gank path. I don't necessarily recommend this very often, since it'll put you behind if you're not successful, but it can still work in the right situation. It involves clearing three camps to hit level three and instantly ganking. This is very dependent on your laners having CC and gank assist. Keep an eye out in champ select for strong kill lanes, such as Leona Tristana, Darius top versus a melee champ, or an assassin mid matchup. Where you want to start in the map is usually opposite of where you want to gank. This allows you to pick up both buffs and one other camp, which is usually Gromp or Raptors straight into a gank. Weaknesses. To close out the video, let's talk about Graves' biggest strengths and weaknesses. Keeping these in mind can really make a huge difference if you're looking to consistently climb on Graves. Graves' biggest weakness is his reliance on other champions to set him up for success. The main reason for this is since Graves does not have any hard CC in his kit and can sometimes have a hard time locking down very mobile targets. The main reason I want to emphasize this is because this weakness can be easily shored up if your team has some sort of primary engage, such as a Leona or Rel. When Graves is able to follow up on CC, the champion's value skyrockets. To build on top of this, Graves also struggles into long range team comps. Champions such as Victor, Seraphine, and Caitlyn can make your life very difficult in teamfights since they can easily zone you away with their long range and zone control. Sometimes picking Graves into these types of team comps can make you pretty irrelevant, so be wary. Lastly, Graves can have a hard time when your team does not have lane priority. Graves shines when he's able to play aggressively in the enemy's face, counter jungling and skirmishing. If you have a full scaling team that loses lane early, it can be tough to pull off Graves since he's not necessarily a strong ganking jungler. Strengths. Let's discuss Graves' biggest strengths what makes him an absolute monster carry in the jungle. Although Graves does not feel great to play with losing lanes, he absolutely shines when lanes are even or ahead. 
Graves with enough priority to contest scuttle crabs and counter jungle is extremely difficult for a lot of junglers to deal with. This is because he is such a strong dueling champion that can easily kite out a majority of the melee meta junglers. A great Graves player will know exactly at what times he can play in the enemy's face, chunking them out, stealing farm, and getting himself a massive XP and gold lead. Another big strength that Graves has is his relevance at every stage in the game. He's strong early game, mid game, and is one of the best late game junglers that there is. Knowing how to pilot Graves at every stage of the game is very important so that you can really impact the map at all times. Lastly, and most importantly in my opinion, is how Graves can keep up with the farming junglers in the game. Season 11 has really turned into a full clearing meta, and Graves is definitely up there with the other top tier farmers. Although Graves clear is not as fast as champions like Udyr and Hecarim, he can still keep up much better than many other champions right now. This allows you to power farm your way into a mid to late game monster that has much higher carry potential than those other mentioned champions. Always remember to keep those CS numbers high and you'll be a serious threat to deal with for the enemy team. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Graves Jungle. If you stayed to the end and have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you did enjoy, it helps me out so much if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my posts. I post gameplay guides every couple days and I'll be cranking out way more in-depth guides just like this one for season 11 coming soon. If you're interested in joining the community of like-minded players looking to improve, be sure to join the Moose End Discord, the link will be in the description. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Until the next video, peace out.